Hi everyone, my name is Patrick and I'm a web developer from Sydney. I've recently been looking into using JavaScript to control devices such as Arduinos, the Leap Motion, Ninja Blocks, and hopefully very soon this Pebble Watch. Today I'm going to be going over the absolute basics of controlling an Arduino using Node. We're going to cover connecting up to your computer, getting Node to communicate with the Arduino, and hopefully by the very end, blinking this LED light on and off. I'll be sticking to absolute basics here, so we won't be doing anything too advanced. Hopefully, in future tutorials, I'll go over something that's a little bit more complicated. But for this one, we're going to show you how to get started. So let's do that and get started. What is an Arduino? Uh, a lot of people have read the name online, or they've heard it mentioned, but they've never actually seen one in action. So this is it. It's a single board microcontroller that's open source, uh, which basically means that you can control electronics using a platform that anyone can build and tinker with. The people at Arduino are lovely enough to have open sourced it, which means that anybody can make their own Arduino boards if they really want to. This one here in particular is the Arduino Uno. It's one of a variety of different models that the lovely people at Arduino have released. You can have a whole range of components connected to it too, like LED light bulbs, sensors, and even shields, which are things you kind of stack on top of Arduinos to add more functionality. This one in particular is a MIDI shield, which adds the ability for it to play sounds, like a MIDI keyboard does. Node.js is a platform that takes JavaScript, a scripting language most commonly used for web pages, and allows you to write network applications, such as web servers. We'll be using it today to run a web server that'll talk to our Arduino. If you haven't used Node.js before, get started by heading over to nodejs.org, which I'm showing on screen here. Click that install button and get it installed and running on your computer so that you'll be able to continue and follow along with the example code that I'll be putting up. So why Node.js and Arduinos? Why link these two technologies together? Well, one of the strengths of JavaScript is that there are quite a few APIs out there which you can join in different ways to make ideas come to life. Want to develop a robot that takes instructions from your Twitter followers, or a coffee machine that makes you a different style of coffee depending on the weather outside. If you want to add a leap motion as an input device, or feed in data from your Jawbone or Fitbit fitness products. The possibilities are growing all the time, and JavaScript is becoming an easy-to-use bridge between technologies because we've got a whole bunch of APIs that we've got access to. And what is Johnny5? Uh, Johnny5 is one of those open APIs that makes JavaScript such a valuable language to be developing this sort of thing in. It allows you to control your Arduino using very similar functions to those that you'd use if you were programming it just using the Arduino platform that comes with the Arduino itself. We'll be doing a lot of this stuff in the tutorial that it's explaining here, so don't worry too much. But as you can see, there's a lot of cool things that people have started to make with it. A wireless node bot to connect controlled robot arm, an LCD running man. So, you know, the possibilities get pretty exciting. Okay, to get started, we'll need to connect up our Arduino to our computer. So we'll do this by connecting the USB port to our Arduino. Uh, serves as both the power to the Arduino and the way to upload software to our Arduino. As you can see, once you plug it in, you'll have the on light flicker on, which is a good sign. In this demo today, I'll be doing a really basic example of turning this LED light on and off. I've already got the jumper leads in where they should be. Uh, so if you need to pause this to be able to Follow along, feel free to pause it now and put the jumper leads in in the way that I've got them. Uh, connecting up the Arduino is pretty simple. Connect up the green one here to pin 13 on your Arduino, then connect up the red one to the 5 volt pin. And finally, we connect up the black one to the ground. It doesn't really matter about colors, you can use whatever color jumper wire you'd like. Now that that's all done, we're ready to go into the software 
part of the tutorial of what code we've got to run and where to talk to our Arduino. Our node application is extremely simple. We've only got two files, an index JavaScript file and a package JSON file. If you're new to Node, uh, the package JSON file is what we use to provide any details about the application and what other Node modules are required for that application. So to start with, I'll go over this package.json file and show you what's going on. So here we've got what the name of our application is. Uh, in this case, Node and Johnny5. You can name this whatever you'd like. Totally up to you, but keep it all to one word. Uh, it doesn't seem to like spaces. It'll start complaining at you, so definitely stick to a one word. We've got a version number. Once again, you can pretty much use any version number you'd like really for simple basic test applications. I've called it 0.0.1 .0 because really this application is very, very early stages and isn't going to be doing too much. So I'm keeping it at a very early version. Then the very important thing, which will definitely prevent our application working with Arduinos is our dependency section here. This is where we say what other modules we need running and in our node application for this to work. So we only need Johnny5, which is the module I was showing earlier. And this here is the version. So in this case, we want the latest Johnny5 version of that module. Basically, we're doing such simple stuff, just basic turning an LED light on and off. Not likely to change, so we're going to assume that in every future version of Johnny5, it'll be compatible with what we're going to be doing here. So there's no need to really be specific on which version we're wanting. Now we'll go on to the index JavaScript file. Our index JavaScript file contains all of the functionality for the Node application. So this pretty much is our Node application in 19 lines, two of which are console logs. So a very, very small application here. I'll go through it step by step and explain what everything is and why it's there. Firstly, we've got our five variable. Our five variable just requires the Johnny5 module. Once again, the reason that we've got it here as well as in the package JSON file is that we're assigning all of the different objects and functionality that we gain from the Johnny5 module into this five variable so we can access it throughout the node application. An example of that is our next line here, which is board. Our board variable is creating a new board object, which is part of the Johnny5 module. So we're looking in the Johnny5 object here that we've required in, and we're grabbing the board object which is all part of the Johnny5 module. We don't have to worry about any of this. We don't have to really create any of this. It's all been there, thanks to the geniuses who've come before us. Next up, we're declaring a few more variables that we'll use later on. So we're declaring the LED variable, and we're declaring the toggle state variable. I'll explain these a bit later on. To begin, we've got this here, actually. This is an important one, because this is what will come up first. When we run our application, it's just a console log saying waiting for a device to connect. What that means is that that'll come up first as soon as the node application starts up, uh, just to let us know that the node application is at least running. But we don't know yet whether our Arduino has connected up and whether we can talk to it. What then happens is using this board variable here that we created, which is a Johnny5 board object. We say on ready, which means when we've got the event of ready fired from the board, which means the board is ready for us to send any sort of commands and requests to it. We run this function right here. And this function starts off with a console log saying board ready. This will just let us know if we're watching the console while our node application is running that the board is ready to receive our requests. It also is a good way to debug whether or not the board is connected properly, your Arduino board. Next up, we use this LED variable that we declared earlier. And we create a new LED, once again, part of the Johnny5 module. We're basically just letting it know that we've got an LED 
at pin 13, which is where we plugged into earlier. Then we get to the JavaScript-y bit, which is we're setting an interval using a JavaScript function, which many of you might be familiar with if you're JavaScript gurus. Basically, set interval means that we're going to use this function here, toggle LED, every 200 milliseconds. And you can play around with this number if you'd like later on just to experiment and change how often the LED light's going to toggle on and off. But basically, we're going to say run this function every 200 milliseconds. And what is in that function? Well, the function here has three lines and one blank line, which is just there for ease of reading. Basically, we use this variable here, toggle state, which we set up earlier to be false. And each time toggle LED runs, we'll change the value of toggle state from true to false or from false to true. So we basically just change it to the opposite of what it was. Then if toggle state is true, we turn our LED light on. Otherwise, turn it off. So basically, we keep changing toggle state on and off, on and off. In turn, turning our LED light on and off and on and off. If you're following this now and kind of picturing the function running in your head, you'll notice there is nothing that turns off this LED. So it will theoretically go on forever, continually turning on and off and on and off until we either disconnect our Arduino or we turn off this node application. And I'll be showing you how to do that too. Theoretically, you could also include some other functionality in here to turn off the interval by clearing the interval if you'd like to. But in this tutorial, to keep things simple, we're just going to keep it to the basics of showing you this is how you can control the Arduino from Node. And then you can add as much functionality as you'd like to on top of this and have a bit of fun. Now that we've got those two files up there and ready to run our Node application, we do have to ensure that those dependencies that we mentioned, in our case, just Johnny5, are there and available for the application to run. So what I've done is I've opened up a terminal and I've gone to the same folder that we put those two files in to prove that to you. I'll just show you there. So we've got the index JavaScript file and our package JSON file. So how you would usually run a node application is just node space index.js. And we're going to attempt to run it. And what we see here is that it says cannot find module Johnny5, which is fair enough. Uh, we've told it in the index JavaScript file that there's going to be a node module called Johnny5, and it's gone and looked for it and can't find it and is now very upset at us for lying to it. So we need to get it installed. To install it, you can use an incredible package manager called npm. npm just runs through your package.json file and installs any dependencies that you've got listed. If you don't have npm on your machine, just do a quick Google search for npm and install it on your computer. It's quite a simple process, so I won't cover it here. But basically, once you've got npm installed, you type in npm space install, and it'll go through looking through our package JSON file. It also does a nice bunch of warning us saying we don't have a few of those fields that we could have had. We didn't have a description, I think, and a few other ones. But basically, it's gone through and installed our modules here. So we've got all of the Johnny 5 modules and all this other stuff that it deemed necessary to be able to run our application. So now, I'm going to clear this. Uh, but before we run our actual application, we're going to need to set up our Arduino so that it's able to receive communication from our node application. To get this communication working between our Arduino and the computer, we just need to upload a bit of code to our Arduino. Uh, Arduino calls these bits of code sketches, which you upload and install onto the Arduino. And then the Arduino knows what it's got to do. In our case, we don't need the Arduino to do too much. Most of our functionality is in Node. All we need to do is install a bit of code to ensure that it understands how to communicate with the computer. First off, before we install it, if you haven't used 
the Arduino software before, double check that your serial port is pointing to the correct USB port. You might need to do a bit of trial and error with this one if you're not sure which USB port is the correct one. But in my case, it was this TTY USB modem. Do a bit of trial and error to check which will work. If you are having any issues with uploading your code to your Arduino, definitely check that setting right there. I've also got the board set up to be Arduino Uno, set it up to whichever board your one is. Then to upload the sketch, we're gonna to go to File, Examples, and then you'll have this on yours too if you go to Formata. We want the standard Formata sketch here. And this, as it says, is a generic protocol for communicating with microcontrollers from software on a host computer. That is convenient because that's exactly what we want to do. Uh, we want to communicate from our node software to our microcontroller, which is our Arduino. So to upload this to our Arduino, make sure you've got it plugged in to your computer still and click upload. It'll compile the sketch. It'll upload it onto the Arduino. And then in a few seconds, it should be done. There we go. So it's done uploading, which means you've now got the standard Fermata software or standard Fermata sketch on your Arduino, which means we're ready now to move on to the next very exciting bit of running our node code and communicating with that Arduino. We've got our two files set up, our index JavaScript, which has all the code for our node application. We've installed all of our dependencies using NPM. We've also got our Arduino connected and running the standard Fermata sketch code, which means it's now ready to accept all commands that will come to it from our computer. So all that's left is to be in our terminal window and type in node index.js. And when we run this, We've got our waiting for device to connect message along with a few messages that come from the Johnny5 module. It's found our serial port, which is the USB port that we've got the Arduino connected to. Your one might be very different to this. Doesn't really matter. The main important thing is that our console log that we set up, which said board ready, has appeared. And if you turn to face your LED light, you'll see that it's now flashing, which is lovely. It means that our code is working. We're sending a command to the 13th pin, telling it to turn an LED light on and off. And so it's turning on and off and on and off and on and off, just as we requested it to. The only important question is, how do you get it to turn off? How do you stop it from constantly running this node application? Well, if we go back to the terminal here, uh, what you've got to do is just press Control C and then Control C again, and it'll close the board and we'll stop that light blinking. If you've timed it correctly, the light will be off. If you time it slightly differently, the light will stay on, and that's okay, really, it's not a big deal. If you want to completely turn it off, you can just unplug the USB from the computer and it'll turn off all power to your Arduino. It won't harm it in any way. It's just a quick way of getting it to stop doing what it was doing that you didn't really want it to do. And that, my friends, is how you turn a LED light on and off and on and off in an infinite loop using Node, Johnny5, and an Arduino. If you followed along, you should now have an LED light bending to your Node application as well. Could work. This is the basics. Uh, there's a lot more to do from here. If you've got any questions or if there's anything that I've missed, feel free to get in touch with me. My name, once again, is Patrick Catanzariti. I'm on Twitter at thatpatrickguy, or I've got a website, uh, patcat.me. So feel free to get in touch. If you make anything really cool with Arduinos following on from this tutorial, definitely get in touch as well. I'd love to see. Thanks for taking the time to watch, and I hope you've learned something new. See ya.